Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to continue with a little bit more exploration of the arpeggiator, the RPG-8 monophonic arpeggiator and um, how we're going to use this to affect uh, the reed drum as well as the loop player. Now when I showed you in some of my previous um, video tutorials, I showed you a method whereby you could control all of reed drum or all of the loop player um, over here the octorex with an arpeggiator and basically doing this through um, controlling the combinator itself. However, this type of method for this and for the reed drum allows you to uh, basically trigger only the gate of the device. It doesn't allow you to control the pitch. So the way we can get around that um, if you turn it around, I'm assuming that you've already set up, you've already seen my previous tutorial, so you've set this up. What you can do is you can take the uh, CV input from the arpeggiator and you can send it to the oscillator pitch of the um, Octorex and then increase the trim knob to 127 and then turn it around and I've already got a couple notes on the lane that I wanted to have there. So with that in mind, what we can do is we can start playing around with some of these octave shifting. Uh, let's just play it through and I'll show you. So right now you've got it at a very high pitch because we've, we've increased the trim knob. Uh, what you might want to do actually, now that I think about it, is probably keep it where it is. And then you can lower the pitch. increase the pitch. Okay, that also means you can increase the octave by three octaves and then lower the pitch and you've got a pretty full range. Okay, so in that way we can um, we can basically play the Octorex player uh, via the pitch control back here. Now another thing that we can do, um, this is just another method that I was thinking of. Uh, let's just close this for now. Now let's go in here and we'll do our redrum trick um, over here. We'll create a redrum, except now let's create an arpeggiator underneath, actually underneath the combinator. Uh, we'll create the arpeggiator and we'll move this up into the device the way we did previously. I'm going to load up a patch here. We'll load up our house kit again. And now what you can do, instead of controlling the entire redrum, what you can do is you can take the gate in and you can put it into the gate in of the first drum. And you can also put the gate, uh, the CV in to the pitch. And what this does, uh, you also want to turn the pitch, actually you don't want to turn the pitch up. What this does is when you start playing this around, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift that pattern onto the other lane. I'm also going to open up the tool window and I'm going to have this run from C1 to A1. I'm going to apply that. So this takes all those notes and puts it um, in the usable range of the redrum. And right now you're just going to hear this kick over here uh, when we start playing it. And we don't want to enable the pattern there. We do want to open this up, take the redrum. We don't want to have it receiving notes because it's getting all the note information from the arpeggiator. listen to it, now you can control the pitch. And I believe if you turn this up, you can have a higher degree of control. Okay, so that's one way that you can control the pitch. So doing this, what you can do is you can create another arpeggiator underneath here. Uh, let's see, we'll just create a few. and then you can link them all up. So the gate goes to the gate, 
CV goes to the CV, the note CV. I'm going to turn all these up. Okay, so now we'll just go through and play it again. there you have it. Um, this is just a way that you can also use the pitch to control the pitch of the drums. And uh, who said redrum was obsolete, right? So again, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, come visit me at reason101.net, which is my main blog. And my name is Rob. Thanks for listening.